Hey buddies, Potemic Whiskey here and today we're going to be doing a first look and analysis of the Byzantium civilization in the Civ 6 New Frontier Pass. Basil II leads Byzantium in Sid Meier's Civilization 6. A distinguished general and administrator, Basil reduced the power of the aristocracy, filled the empire's treasury, and expanded its borders. Byzantium's unique ability is called Taxis. It gives units additional combat or religious strength for each holy city converted to Byzantium's religion. Damn, that seems like it could be really, really powerful. Also, I really like the sort of Gregorian chant music that they've put in the background, and I really like the aesthetic of the uh, the Byzantian uh, Byzantian civilization so far. The ability helps power this conversion by spreading Byzantium's religion whenever an enemy civilization or city-state unit is defeated. Taxis. Wait, what? That's insane! If you spread your religion when you kill enemy units, that means like the crusade belief is like the only belief that makes sense and you're going to want to go straight domination. I mean that ability alone is pretty damn ridiculous. Being able to spread your religion directly through warfare and if you can combine that with like the crusade belief, your units could be running around not only doing extra damage from the taxes thing, but spreading your religion. Oh man, and having the plus 10 combat strength from crusade. Holy crap. This also lets cities with holy sites earn bonus great profit points. Okay, those bonus great profit points are actually really, really important. Uh, and mostly for deity play. Um, one of the hardest parts about deity is uh, if you're playing a religious sieve, is actually getting your religion without like squandering too much of your sieve's early game potential. And getting an extra great profit point is pretty big for that because that might mean that you can maybe skip a shrine or you can skip out on getting a, a an extra holy site project. That's that's a really really big deal to me. Um, and I think that shows that the developers have a really good idea of what the challenges players face at high levels. It's just such a very small, slight bonus on the surface, but it actually has really big consequences when you're playing on DD. I think that's that's uh, that's really interesting. So they have a really good bonus for getting a religion. They have a really good bonus for having a religion. Now I'm curious what other bonuses they have. Byzantium has two unique units. The Dromon replaces the Quadrian, offers additional range, and receives additional combat strength against other units. Damn, okay, I like the Droman. Uh, that's really, really cool. I, I've kind of always been a complaint of mine that quad Quadrariums only have one range, and so having a civilization with the ability to have one with two range, that opens up a lot of early game naval play as well. So this Civ is definitely going to be no slouch when it comes to land and naval based combat, which is kind of exciting. I think we've had a lot of Civs that are good at one or the other, but not a whole lot that are good at both. It is kind of skewed towards the early game, but I think it is going to open up options on island maps or even maps with Pangaea where you could maybe go attack someone early with Droman. I think, I think that's a very interesting unit. The Tagma replaces the Knight and grants nearby land units additional combat or religious strength. Oh, okay, so that's like a, a knight. Oh, holy crap. How much power can they pack into this civilization? Not only do they have like an incredibly powerful religion, they have an incredibly powerful ability to get a religion. They have a unique knight replacement unit that um, gives their other units combat strength. They act like great generals and they also act like great generals for religious units. This is this save looks really, really powerful, which is exactly what I was hoping for. I was hoping for like a really, really powerful save. And I'm also kind of hoping that they might sneak in some buffs for some other saves in this patch or maybe the next patch. Byzantium's unique Hippodrome district replaces the entertainment complex, is cheaper to build and provides additional amenities. When the Hippodrome and its buildings are constructed, they also grant a free heavy cavalry unit that does not cost maintenance. What? Hang on a minute, you could just research your unique knight unit, then start building entertainment complexes and their buildings and start printing heavy cavalry out the wazoo. Oh, I'm actually really interested in playing this Civ. They're going to have an incredibly unique play style. That's insane. Wow, I actually don't really know. Man, that's really damn good. Like, just getting, being able to create units out of air, especially building something like the entertainment complex, which is usually required for some sort of war game if you're going to keep up on amenities, especially with the dramatic ages mode that's coming up in this uh, 
patch as well. That's so interesting. That's that's ridiculously powerful. But I don't think it's like I don't know if it's game breaking. We'll really have to play with it. But that seems like powerful enough to be really fun to play with. Basil's ability is called Porfiro Yenetos. We'll we'll take a look at the screen here in a little bit. It allows heavy and light cavalry units to do full damage against cities following the same religion as Byzantium. What? That's ridiculous. That's insane because you're you kill the enemy units, that converts them to your religion, gives you crusade benefit and your cavalry units do full damage to their cities. This is this is like an insane war save right now as far as I can tell. I'm not seeing anything that'll slow these guys down. Byzantium's focus is on an offensive, military, and religion-centered game, with abilities designed to create synergies between the two. If you want to pursue a religious victory, don't neglect your military, as your religion spreads to nearby cities when you defeat an enemy unit. Similarly, if you're aiming for a domination victory, prioritize converting holy cities in other civs to your religion, as Byzantium's Taxis ability will make those cities easier for you to conquer. You can't go back to Constantinople, so how will you lead Byzantium in Sid Meier's Civilization VI? Alright, so that's it for that. I really like the style of this leader, by the way. Let's go back to that screen where they had all of his abilities up. Man, I don't even know how to pronounce this, but doing full damage against cities following your same religion is insane, especially when you combine it with the fact that you're able to spread your religion through killing enemy units, and you get a religion really, really easily, and you can print units using entertainment districts, because as far as I can tell, uh, it's you get a free heavy, heavy cavalry unit when you build the hip, Hippodrome, and when you build the buildings inside it. So if you build a Hippodrome and an arena, you get two knights, two unique knights that give um, plus four combat strength to all units adjacent to them. Like, that's insane. This civilization is going to be insane. I'm super excited to play them. I don't really think there's a lot of analysis to be done here, other than like, holy crap, these guys are going to be insane. I'm super excited to play Byzantium. I love you all very much, and I hope you guys enjoy this little analysis video.